When WikiLeaks first published 750,000 sensitive documents leaked by a US Army intelligence private named Chelsea Manning in 2010, it was the first time in human history that the top levels of government and military operations had been laid bare for the entire world to see. But what were the real quantifiable consequences of these actions? Was the website's founder Julian Assange actually working more for the Russian government than he was for his stated goal of open transparency? And Chelsea, was it really necessary for you to leak my private military records where my squad leader said I was a coward? For better or for worse, WikiLeaks forever changed the way the world's military and security services do business. And now, more than a decade later, let's try to analyze if it's led to greater government transparency and what the new military intelligence age might mean for the new cold war that the world finds itself in. The site's founder, Australian-born former hacker Julian Assange, started WikiLeaks with the stated intent of increasing press freedom while keeping its sources untraceable. 2006 was still the relatively early days of the internet, and a data haven for leaked government documents. It seemed like something right out of a 1990s techno-thriller novel, attracting many from the hacker and activist communities to work for the site. Trouble began almost immediately, though, for the newly founded WikiLeaks, as internal divisions between employees and Julian Assange raged on, with many former employees stating that Assange had a dictatorial leadership style that was at odds with the very lofty goals of a free, open world that the website was supposed to be founded on. According to chat logs published by Foreign Policy, WikiLeaks in 2014 chose to turn down the opportunity to release 68 gigabytes worth of data about Russia's involvement in Ukraine and about corruption in the Russian government. Hey Bill, look at all this dirt I got on the American government. Should we leak it? You bet your little tushy we should. How about all this damaging material on the Russian government? Should we leak that? Whoa, whoa, slow down. We don't want to be irresponsible here. This is part of the reason why CIA Director Mike Pompeo once called WikiLeaks a hostile intelligence service and a threat to national security. In the eyes of many, WikiLeaks is a Russian-funded effort. The story gets even stranger because WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange hosted a television show funded by the Russian government on their state news agency, RT. The much-anticipated show by Julian Assange finally burst onto TV screens around the globe. There's Julian Assange, uh, an enemy combatant, a traitor. Uh, getting into bed with, with uh, the Kremlin. Which raises the question, if the goal is unredacted, complete transparency, who gets to be the arbiter of that? Without Raid Shadow Legends, I'd still be living in my dad's 2006 Camry. Raid's fourth anniversary is finally here and there's a ton to get excited about. I'm talking dedicated offers, free gifts, promo codes, events, and a brand new fusion event where you guys can get your hands on an anniversary themed legendary champion. I know you probably think there's no way I actually play Raid, but the truth is I got hooked when I was forced to play it for a sponsorship years ago. So I downloaded it that one time thinking I would just delete it right afterwards and I've been reluctantly playing it ever since. But it's a fun way to pass time when I'm at the airport or traveling, when my family's begging me to pay attention to them instead. They were one of our very first sponsors supporting us. If you haven't already started playing Raid yet, then what are you waiting for? Use my link in the description or scan my QR code to get insane bonuses. We're talking an epic champion, Kellen the Shrike, and other useful things. Additionally, all new and existing players can get a bunch of free birthday gifts. Just enter the promo code four years raid. Download Raid Shadow Legends by clicking the link in the description below or scanning the QR code in the corner of the screen. This could be part of the reason why the CIA, FBI, and NSA all concluded that WikiLeaks had actively collaborated with Russia's principal international propaganda outlet, RT. While that could be true, hearing it from the NSA can't help but remind me of this image. Evidence that Assange withheld the information comes from a source vetted by foreign policy that worked at WikiLeaks who said many WikiLeaks staff and volunteers or their family members suffered at the hands of Russian corruption and cruelty. We were sure WikiLeaks would release it. Assange gave excuse after excuse to not release it. And to be fair, WikiLeaks claimed these documents had either already been published elsewhere or that they were unable to verify them. One popular theory suggests the hackers behind the stolen documents from the US Democratic National Convention 
were actually Russian because of the language these hackers used. The theory goes on to state that these hackers were ordered by the Russian government to release the damning information on the Democrats to WikiLeaks in an attempt to embarrass the Democrats and influence the US election, although the theory has never been definitively proven to my knowledge. Following the 2010 release of US diplomatic cables, the government commissioned several tests and exercises to measure the effects that the documents released by WikiLeaks would have on national security and intelligence operations. One of these tests, commissioned by Brigadier General Nixon at CENTCOM, focused on the effects these leaked documents would have on coalition forces, counter IED operations, and it found that 40% of the leaks represented compromises of counter IED tactics, techniques, and procedures. 13% represented high severity compromises, and another 17% were classified as medium severity, meaning they disclosed tactical procedures that may be observed and possibly countered by insurgents or worse. Dang, Nabbit, it's like the insurgents know what we're gonna do before we do it. Oh, hey, PFC Manning, did you get those photocopies of every top secret document ever? Oh, can you hit the like and subscribe button while you're over there? The report concluded that the leaked documents would act as a training manual, quickly spreading the best methods for planting IEDs across various insurgent groups. But probably the most concerning result was that the leaks included names and other identifying information of locals who would help the coalition, placing huge targets on their backs for intimidation or assassination. In response to allegations that this site's methods could endanger personnel abroad, Assange replied, we are not obligated to protect other people's sources, including those of spies, organizations, and militaries. The website started operation in 2006, however, most average citizens didn't hear much about WikiLeaks until a series of high-profile US classified documents and programs were revealed by government employees Edward Snowden and private Chelsea Manning in the early 2010s. Despite the bumpy start, WikiLeaks immediately started generating buzz in 2007 when it published the standard operating procedures for the US detention facility in Guantanamo Bay. And this is where the gray area comes into play because you might find yourself in agreement that Guantanamo Bay was wrong, but not so comfortable with the idea that Julian Assange was working for RT and hiding Russian government secrets. In 2010, WikiLeaks cranked international pressure up even more when it published gun camera footage from US Apache helicopters in Iraq that showed an incident where two journalists from Reuters were KIA along with 12 other locals with the provocative title of collateral murder. Light them all up. Come on, fire! And I have to ask myself if I'm against leaking video footage of US war crimes while also being for leaking evidence of Russian war crimes in Ukraine. A am I a hypocrite? Is, is that me? Wow, my brain hurts. I can't self-reflect this deep. Later, that same year, WikiLeaks released around 300,000 diplomatic cables regarding the Iraq and Afghanistan conflicts, including evidence that the US had a secret list of civilians and friendly fire casualties from the two conflicts that were much higher than the government had publicly let on. Diplomatic cables are messages transmitted by embassies and other foreign missions back to their home country using a secure and confidential system. And here's where we need to talk about the diplomatic fallout. Because of the normally secure nature of the messages, government officials often discuss secretive, sensitive, or potentially embarrassing matters that aren't supposed to become public knowledge. The fact that these cables were suddenly let out into the wild in the open in such large numbers completely changed the media and diplomatic landscape for both government and international news organizations. And to make matters even more complicated, WikiLeaks has published some leaks and data mined information on US adversaries, including surveillance programs used by the Russian FSB and technological censorship techniques used by the Chinese government. So it's tough to say if WikiLeaks effects on US soft power aren't balanced out by the publishing of similar damaging information from other nations. In 2017, WikiLeaks published data that the Russian Peter service that installs software from the US mobile telecoms industry is actually a contractor of the Russian state. Peter services, according to WikiLeaks, has a state mandate to install programs to tap into, search, and spy on US citizens' digital activity. In 2008, WikiLeaks made 35 previously censored videos of civil unrest in Tibet available in China in an attempt to get around what they called the Great Firewall of China. China had tried to wipe these videos from YouTube and news outlets on their internet. 
If I'm against leaking information on the US, am I a hypocrite for wanting information leaked about China? Slow down, we're not trying to become self-aware here, just trying to learn what's going on. While publishing leaked documents is nothing new in journalism, WikiLeaks stood out by focusing almost exclusively on leaked information. In the past, documents leaked to the press underwent a rigorous review process to remove any sensitive information that could potentially harm innocent third parties or put troops' lives at risk. Whereas WikiLeaks went full transparency mode, publishing unredacted versions of their documents, and let the chips fall where they may. Boston University Paul Hare was a British diplomat for 30 years, and he says fixing corruption doesn't mean uncensoring every single word in the conversation, and it could actually be detrimental to world peace and diplomacy efforts. Paul Hare said, quote, On Syria, would it be helpful for every minutia of what Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and United States Secretary of State John Kerry have said to each other over the last two years to be published? Probably not. If foreign ministers or ambassadors think that what they say the next day is going to be all over the internet, that's going to be a major blow to seeking peaceful solutions. But in my attempt to add nuance to this complicated issue, if governments are allowed to cover up mistakes like civilian casualties in Iraq, that's not good for peace around the world either. Kevin John Heller, professor of international law and security at the University of Copenhagen Center for Military Studies, outlined that the benefits of WikiLeaks far outweigh any of the bad side effects and explained how the more Americans know about their government's actions, the better prepared we are to prevent future mistakes. How the government gains a piece of information can sometimes be just as sensitive as the information itself. An intelligence principle referred to as sources and methods, the leaks revealed that state-of-the-art smart televisions could serve as backdoor listening devices for the NSA, even when it was turned off. Larry Pfeiffer, the CIA chief of staff from 2006 to 2009, and he stated the following, it informs the potential enemies of a technique we use that they can now develop countermeasures against. Most major news outlets work with governments to keep such sources and methods safe while still reporting on items in the public interest, but the US government has routinely criticized WikiLeaks for not respecting this journalistic tradition. WikiLeaks, for their part, takes the stance that governments abuse the relationship and overclassify in an attempt to hide things that people deserve to know. The damage that can be done by unfettered release of top secret documents are not always related to the wrongdoings by the US government. Sometimes foreign countries have vulnerable opposition leaders and human rights activists who are in contact with US diplomats on the down low. WikiLeaks then dumps these discussions onto the web, which can essentially be a death sentence for these people. During Muammar Gaddafi's reign, the US had to remove a diplomat from his post because he was threatened by the dictator's forces for working with the US. Note to self, never release classified information on YouTube channel if I want to stay out of witness protection programs. This is likely a major reason as to why Secretary of State Antony Blinken publicly released the intelligence that the US had collected on details of Russia's plan to invade Ukraine on February 20th, days before the invasion. That kind of information released to the public would never have happened prior to 9-11. It's impossible to tell how many missed opportunities or geopolitical misunderstandings have come to pass as a result of WikiLeaks methods. Outside the direct embarrassment of having diplomatic information leaked to the press, publicly revealing messages or information collected by intelligence services can put US foreign policy into a box. When a series of leaked US diplomatic cables from 2009 showed apparent anti-Iranian bias from the International Atomic Energy Agency, perception within Iran of the UN nuclear chief soured and derailed negotiations trying to curb Iran's nuclear weapons program. And this example shows just how a handful of leaked documents, especially if taken out of context, can jeopardize decades-long diplomatic efforts to avoid a military confrontation. Allied nations have also become more reluctant to to share their information with the US and other nations as well, for fear of their own intelligence sources and methods being revealed because of a leaked cable or document. Slowed or absent intelligence sharing among security partners carries its own risks during tense diplomatic negotiations, multinational counterterrorism operations, and military planning. Scott Anderson, a former State Department lawyer, noted that vulnerable opposition and human rights leaders in some countries had their contact with the US undercovered by leaks, leading to a dramatic chilling effect on efforts to support democracies abroad. Hey Pakistan, you wanna have a private conversation to increase world peace? 
I promise everything you say won't be leaked tomorrow, casting you in the worst light possible. The US government has responded to WikiLeaks directly through legal means, but also acknowledged that WikiLeaks is not a one-off phenomenon. Rather, WikiLeaks represents a 21st century reality that has to be factored into counterintelligence measures going forward. Because even if WikiLeaks gets shut down, and it kind of has already, there are already major spin-offs and mirror sites ready to take its place. Large media organizations like Al Jazeera and the Wall Street Journal have also established their own leak portal to serve the same function in-house. While it's hard to assess all the methods the US government has put in place to guard against WikiLeaks and sites like it, these things are all classified after all, the State Department has instituted new measures to restrict who has access to diplomatic cables and the way they're transmitted. Intelligence services were especially impacted by Edward Snowden leaks, with NSA Director James Clapper having to testify before Congress regarding the NSA's mass surveillance programs and the changes they would make. There are strictures against uh, tracking American citizens uh, in the United States for, for foreign intelligence purposes, and that's what those agencies are set up to do. The Pentagon has had to continually investigate and issue reports to set the record straight on leaks it claims are misleading or taken out of context, cautioning news media against using WikiLeaks claims at face value. Traditional mainstream news garnered criticism of their own for accepting government statements too uncritically during the early days of the global war on terror. But was it really WikiLeaks that helped revive the spirit of a skeptical news media? There was a time when WikiLeaks was synonymous with the term whistleblowing, but today that era may be over. Today, a lot of those documents and info is no longer on the website, which is lousy with broken pages and error 404s. They once claimed to have 10 million documents published, but according to the Daily Dot, only 3,000 remain as of 2022. Julian Assange's legal struggles are likely the cause of WikiLeaks' decline, with the US attempting to extradite him from Britain. We may never be able to know Julian Assange's true motivations with WikiLeaks. Is he trying to use WikiLeaks to shape the world like he would like to see it? Or is he truly trying to shine a light on corruption? Let me know what you guys think. WikiLeaks may or may not live up to its lofty goal of encouraging a more transparent society, but it's definitely fulfilled its goal of changing the way governments and press interact with information forever. I'm your average infantryman, Chris Cappy. Trying to make sense of all this sure did hurt my brain. Oh gosh.